Federal College. Uh, let me now uh, ask Professor John Lucas from Oxford University to give his own opening speech. Professor, you have the floor. I want to start by returning thanks. And I want to say that we are very glad to be here in Bucharest. Not, I should say, uh, to enjoy the weather, <laughs> but uh, for something else, a certain climate of intellectual opinion, which is what brought me here first many years ago, and then another time, and again today. And when I first came, it was just after you got rid of Ceausescu, and we're still reeling under the impact of the years of the locusts eaten and trying to recover a sense of the freedom of thought and excitement of ideas which had been part of the legacy of the West and had been suppressed under communism. And that continued on the second occasion when we um, were here, not in Bucharest, but up in the mountains in Moldova at Sofasia where there was a seminar for people uh, mostly of the, of the same age as the younger ones you here present now, who were going very largely to be teaching political philosophy. And I found it most refreshing then to be with these people because of their uh, great enthusiasm, their uh, dedication to the subject, and their very <coughs> sharp uh, intellects that they were very good at worrying at problems and teasing things out and if I said something that was silly they would point out um, with very great respect that was rather silly. And this of course is the essence of philosophy that you are not based on respect, you are prepared to follow the argument wherever it may lead you or, as one of my colleagues said, wherever it may mislead you. <laughs> And that brings me, I think, to the third uh, point, that at, in Sovasia, and again today, we're dealing um, very largely with political philosophy. And uh, political philosophy is uh, very difficult, rather for the same reason as I found that in England, uh, we are very short of teachers, good teachers of mathematics. And I wondered why this was so, because there were quite a lot of very good mathematicians. And then I came to the conclusion that in order to teach mathematics, you've got to be clever enough to do it, but stupid enough to see that it's difficult. And <laughs> nearly always the uh, teachers <coughs> just, just, just couldn't understand why someone couldn't see that look at this. And, oh, of course. There's a story, in fact, of um, G.H. Hardy um, in New College giving a lecture, and somebody said, said it's obvious that. Is it obvious? And there's a pause for about five or ten minutes. And then, yes, it is obvious. <laughs> <laughs> now, the same difficulty turns up in political philosophy. Because on the one hand, um, you see what's wrong. And you will today and tomorrow be um, subjecting J.S. Mill to the um, critical scrutiny of fresh minds. And you'll find several holes in his arguments, um, one or two fallacies perhaps, um, something wrong here, um, and we should be quite merciless in pointing out where the great man has feet of clay. But at the same time, we need to try and understand why he's important. And the reason is that in political philosophy, it's not enough of just to be very clever. You've got to deal with a world in which other people are thinking, and you've got to have a sense of what ideas will go over, which will be make sense um, even to those stupid people um, down in the uh, down in slums who also have a vote, who also have a right to be um, listened to. And the reason why Mill is important here is that although there are often things wrong with his arguments, he had very good judgment about what was important, what would go over. And that generalizes to a much wider uh, point. That is not only Mill, but various other people that we are still encouraged to teach. And although they are dead, they are often dead white upper class males, but we still think they are important. Plato, Aristotle, Kant, Hobbes. Um, and the reason is, in each case, that although sometimes we can see what's wrong with, say, Plato's argument, he uh, also resonates at another level, at many other levels. 
And that's the mark of the great um, philosophers or of the great um, men of literature generally, that they are people who work on many levels. <coughs> and at one level, we engage them in a very sharp argument. And when Plato in particular is um, very keen to be argued with, and he said that books are actually no good. The only thing which is really alive is an argument. But also, he comes over as having picked up certain recurrent themes that again and again, uh, idealists in the Israeli kibbutzim or uh, people trying to set up a new world in a uh, new, new utopia in South America, uh, they are inspired by the same sorts of thought that Plato there was able to articulate. Well, now, here we're concerned not um, with um, Plato, but with um, <coughs> And in his wide range, we often find there's something which we disagree with, but all the same, he is resonating not only with us, but with many other us's in other places. And I think that gives a reason why we're very lucky to be here to talk about um, uh, to, to talk about Mill, and why, in general, it's a, a very good thing to um, study the great <coughs> um, uh, writers in philosophy because they can say something which goes at a different level, at many different levels, and lasts long after some of the lighter and sharper arguments that we put forward have been answered and have gone away. So anyhow, let me end again by saying thank you very much to you all for inviting us, and we hope that um, we shall together be able to have some new insights about um, John Stuart Mill. Professor Lucas is an old friend of our faculty, as you perhaps uh, realized, and uh, he visited us a couple of years ago, and I, I, I would say that he, has a, he had an influence on, on some of us and on a number of students of his faculty. You can find his books in, and, and even more books than we already have in, in, in the library. So, Professor Lucas, the floor is yours. Can I have the shaggy, the, 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 the